I mean, clearly, it is a denomination's particular interpretation of Paul that gives each denomination its uniqueness. But how can that be if we're all reading the same words from the same apostle from the same New Testament? How can the doctrines of various denominations vary so greatly from one another if we have but a single source of reference that we all look to? The answer is again as done stated. When the Hebrew context and the Jewish reality of who Paul is is removed, what remains is confusion and contradiction. And for centuries, Paul has been accused by insiders and outsiders of the Christian faith of confusion and contradiction in his several epistles. Thus, each denomination has cherry-picked statements of Paul that suits their agenda and belief, and it ignores others of Paul's statements that seem contradictory to those. And it's that set of Paul's statements that has formed the basis of their particular brand of Christianity. I'm going to make an analogy now in order to make a point that I've touched on before. I hope you'll give me all your focus for a few moments. I think it'll be valuable to you. Now, although in Paul's school, studying the Bible, the biblical Torah, the prophets, was certainly part of his training. In reality, what was taught were the theological viewpoints of Gamaliel about the Torah and the prophets. Further, this particular strand of rabbinical Judaism that Gamaliel followed operated within a set of doctrines that we commonly call Jewish law. In Hebrew, this is called halakha. Now, these Jewish laws were not the same thing as the Torah law, the law of Moses. Jewish law is not the law of Moses. Two different things. The law of Moses in Hebrew is called mitzvot. Rather, these Jewish laws were essentially man-made Rulings and doctrines, Yeshua called them traditions of the elders, purported to accurately reflect the true interpretation of the law of Moses and the prophets. The rulings and doctrines established a system of behaviors and customs and theological expectations that those who adhered to the Gamaliel rabbinic philosophy, those like Paul, believed in, so they followed them scrupulously. Now, for centuries, although much more so in modern times, training centers for the future leaders of Christianity have operated in the same way as these ancient rabbinical schools. We usually call these Christian training centers seminaries. However, each strand of Christianity, each denomination has its own peculiar set of doctrines, so each has its own designated schools to teach their doctrines. So what happens at a seminary? Now, while the Bible is certainly taught, the larger emphasis is placed in the doctrines and customs and theological expectations of that particular denomination that operates the seminary. Because those doctrines are purportedly derived from the Bible and define what that denomination believes the Bible says about any number of subjects. So when a student signs up to attend a certain seminary, he or she has already made a conscious decision about which strand of Christianity they have faith in and intend to follow. The rulings and doctrines that they're taught at seminary then establish that particular domination's, denomination system of behaviors and customs and theological expectations that those students are not only to follow, but are, as graduates, expected to lead other people to follow. 
Now, in both the cases of Judaism and Christianity, while the Bible is highly venerated and it's taught at their schools, it's given second place to the doctrines and customs that are taught. Let me say it this way. The Bible is viewed through the lens of that denomination's doctrines, not the other way around. The Bible is viewed through the lens of that denomination's doctrines, not the other way around. So although the student might not be fully conscious of it, what they wind up gaining is the greatest knowledge of and devotion to the ways that a board of religious scholars and elders long ago decided are the right ways. In Christianity, these ways are called Doctrines. In Judaism, they're called halakot, plural for halakha, Jewish law. Once again, are these ways taught in the religious schools, Judaism or Christianity, the same as the Bible? Are they scripture? No. But they are said to capture the correct essence and meaning of the Bible. This is why I regularly say that the Christian church is no more nor less Bible-based than Judaism. The church is doctrine-based, just as Judaism is halakha-based. Paul's theology revolved around the halakha of the Pharisees. In fact, it was the halakha of a specific brand of Pharisees is championed by, championed by Gamaliel, and it did not always agree with the halakha of the other brands of Pharisees, which, like with Christianity, there were numerous brands. 